Okay, here's where we left off. What we're really looking for is the probability to the left of negative 1.65. But our t-table deals with probabilities to the right of a value. And so to the right of positive 1.65 would be the same probability. So I can look this up on the t-chart. We've got a degree of freedom of 23. We're looking for positive 1.65. If you look at your t-chart, all of the values in here are all positive values. That's why we want to go with the positive 1.65. So our degree of freedom was 23. Okay, here's 23. And we want to look for 1.65 because there's no negative 1.65. We have to look for positive 1.65. Okay, so it's between these two values. Again, degree of 23. We're looking for 1.65. It's between these two. So you look up. It's going to be between 0 0.10 and 0 0.05. Okay. Now, between 0 0.10 and 0 0.05, well, put the smaller number first. So, between 0 0.05 and 0 0.10. And that's your p-value again. Okay, now, how does our p-value relate to the significance level? 0.05 to 0 0.10 is more than our alpha value of 0 0.05, so we're going to fail to reject. Okay, next one over here. Um, we have a degree of freedom of 17. Our test statistic is 1.82. So let's maybe draw a picture just to see what we're dealing with. Okay, this is a pretty bad picture. <laughs> 1.82, which way would we shade? Look at your alternative. It's less than, oh boy, I need to be thinking about this probability over here. Well, your T table is everything shaded to the right. So it's like the complete opposite of a Z chart. So, so in order to get this right stuff, we're going to have to do 1 minus the, to get the left stuff here, we're going to have to do 1 minus this probability to the right. Okay. So I'm going to look up 1.82 with my degree of freedom of 17. All right, I've got to find my chart. Where'd it go? Degree of freedom of 17, and we're looking for 1.82. 1.82 is between these two. So b between 0 0.05 and 0 0.025. Okay. between 0 0.05 and 0 0.025. So in order to get um, this shaded stuff to the left, we have to do one minus those two values. So that will make us between 0.95 and 0.975. Those are our uh, p-values. Okay. 
Okay, so again, it was because your T chart deals with probabilities to the right, which is opposite of Z charts, okay? We wanted the probability shaded to the left, so that would be 1 minus the probability to the right. If you look up degree of freedom of 17 and you're looking for 1.82, it ends up being between these two. So you're going to have to do 1 minus those. And if you look at your picture, that's a lot of the chart shaded, so it should be in the 95% or 97%. So that kind of matches. Alright, so anyway, what's going on with our p-value versus the alpha value? Well, our alpha is only 0 0.05, so our p-value is way bigger than alpha. So we fail to reject. Now, the only last thing we got to talk about is how to handle a two tail. Okay, again, um, a two tailed t test. We're dealing with means, but now you have a not equal to. That's two tailed. That's how you know when it's two tailed. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to double both of the values. So if our sample size was seven, our degree of freedom would be 6. We would be looking for our test statistic of 2.12. So we would go across our degree of freedom of 6. We're looking for 2.12. That's between those two values. Look up 0 0.05 and 0 0.025. Well, we're going to have to double both of those to get both tails. This would only represent one tail. We have to double it to get a two-tailed test. So we have to double 0.05 to get 0 0.10 and we double 0 0.025 to get 0 0.05. So that would be our p-value between 0 0.05 and 0 0.10. Okay, so just another practice. This is a two-tailed test because it's a not equal to. Our sample size is 13, so our degree of freedom would be 12. We're looking for 1.45 on our table. Let me find the table here. Okay, so our degree of freedom is 12 and we're looking for 1.45. Okay, here's degree of freedom 12. We're looking for 1.45. That's between these two values. Look up. That's between 0 0.10 and 0 0.05. Okay. Point one zero and 0 0.05, but we're going to have to double both of those. Okay, when you double 0 0.10, you get 0 0.20, and when you double 0 0.05, you get 0 0.10. So our p-value is between Put the smaller one first, 0 0.10 and 0 0.20. Okay, so if our alpha is 5% or 0 0.05, our p-values are bigger than that. Our p-values are bigger than alpha, so we would fail to reject. The null. Okay. Um, let's do this last one. Again, it's a two-tail test. Sample size of 22 means our degree of freedom would be um, 21. And we're looking for 2.09. 
Okay, degree of freedom of 21, and we're looking for 2.09. Okay, 2.09 would be between these two, right? So look up, it would be between 0 0.025 and 0 0.02. 0 0.025. And 0 0.02. Okay, so we're going to have to double those. So if we double 0 0.025, we get 0 0.05. And if we double 0 0.02, we get 0 0.04. So our p value is between 0 0.04 and 0 0.05. How does that compare to the alpha? Those p-values, that range of p-values is less than our alpha, so we reject the null. Okay, so um, on your homework tonight, you're going to want to draw pictures like we were doing here, um, and then find your p-values. Or if it's uh, Z, then treat it just like Z scores. So you might want to draw a little picture, treat it just like finding the probability of a Z score, and that's your p-value. So just pay attention to whether it's a proportion problem involving p's, you would use a Z. Or if it's a mean problem involving mu's, and then you would use a T score. Okay, good luck when I get back. When we all get back on Wednesday, we will take a lot of time to go over this again. All right, goodbye.